Hello and welcome to episode 33 of the chess.com rapid rating climb series. I'm just going to make my first move so the game doesn't abort. My name is Alex and the point of this series is to play rapid games in 15 minutes plus 10 second increment and try and get my rating to 2000 ELO. We started off at around 15, 1600 I want to say and just talk you through my thought process while we play and then in the post game analysis use the computer like engine lines and the fact that I can actually play the moves out on the board instead of just drawing arrows and saying connotations so that we can delve deeper into concepts and you know so you guys can get educated and improve your chess game and maybe even enjoy the video at the same time so we have e4 e5 on the board I am going to play knight c3 the Vienna game. Those of you who, you know, are already familiar with the channel will know this is one of my favorite openings and it's the main opening with the white pieces in my repertoire. And we'll see how my opponent responds. There's quite a few moves you can play. Knight f6 is the main line. Knight to c6 is also a main move. You can play bishop c5 Although this often transposes with a move like knight c6 after bishop c4, which kind of often goes into the same line as this. Other than that, there's not that many moves. I mean, you could play a move like d6, but I mean, it's just a bit odd. Like, there's no need to block your bishop in like this when you can just develop a knight instead. Like, typically, the whole um, idea of openings is to develop knights before bishops. That's like beginner principles and of course there's always exceptions to principles but like generally that is good advice because the bishops need pawns to move out of their way so that they can access different diagonals obviously whereas the knights can just hop over the pawns and knights coming to f3 c3 f6 and c6 you know these squares all control um Sorry, like jumping to these developmental squares or control squares in the center that are very important. And, you know, the fight for the central squares is is, is important in chess. Like it's not the be all and end all, but it's, an impo it's important to gain space and control the game from the center. So my opponent goes knight to f6. Do you know what's happening? f4, the Vienna Gambit. Fantastic opening, loads of videos in the Rating Climb series in the Vienna Gambit and you can check those out in the playlist below if you want but of course you can just watch this video as it is. And my opponent goes d6. d6 is one of the main moves. I will briefly touch on the other moves that you can play in the post game analysis. This isn't the most accurate response but it's not bad. It's not bad. Taking here is very bad. I have explained this in previous videos, but again, I'll touch on it in the post-game analysis. The point here is to go knight f3, and again, you encourage your opponent to take. This is kind of like a good version of the king's gambit, in my opinion. Okay, so we have bishop to g4. Pinning my knight to my queen, obviously. And in the Vienna Gambit, if I can bring my bishop out to c4, there are a lot of ideas of taking on f7 and moving my knight to like e5 after a trade of pawns with a check and attacking the bishop because the knight will move with an attack and he won't be able to take my queen. I'll go into this after, don't you worry. The only issue with bishop c4 is knight takes e4. And if I take back, then d5. And I believe we actually had this exact position in a previous video. I'm sure we did. And I was calculating bishop c4, knight e4, knight e4, d5, bishop d3 takes takes. But the computer didn't like it that much. I'm pretty sure better is bishop c4, knight e4, bishop f7, king f7, and then knight e4. And then the material's equal, but my opponent has some problems with his king's safety. And we're also preparing to castle and open up the f file onto his king. So we're going to go bishop to c4. Again, like I said, you, you do have to be careful for these moves. 
My opponent takes, though. And honestly, that's a very nice move to see. Yeah, he does skip a lot of these tactics on his bishop. But now we have such a strong grip over d5. He, he, he can't play d5, really. And if he tries to go c6 to play d5, then we'll probably take and force his d-pawn onto the e-file so he doesn't have a pawn to play d5 with. There's a bunch of moves we can play here. I don't really want to take unless I'm provoked to. So I'm just going to go d3. Of course, if he takes us, then we take back and we're happy. Could you throw a knight onto d5 in this position? Sure. But what's the point? Like, you don't gain anything there. And if anything, your opponent just gets extra, extra control of the center. Also keep in mind the move f5 in a lot of these scenarios, trying to just barrel down the king side with moves like f5, g4, g5, which is definitely an option. Like you could castle queen side and go for an attack like that. Kind of tempting, to be fair. Is kind of tempting. And I don't really have faith in my opponent's ability to attack me on the queen side. What we could do is play a move like bishop e3 to stay very flexible. So we can still castle kingside if we want. We haven't committed to f5 yet, but we also could castle queenside. Okay, and he does play c6. So now is he threatening this move? No, because after takes, 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 remember our queen also controls the square as well as the bishop. So we have one, two, three, four defenders of the d5 square. He has one, two, three after this pawn goes there. So he can't take it anyway. Sorry, he can't go there anyway. So that's not a problem. So the thing is, if I go g4, I don't really like the fact that he can take me. So I feel like f5 then g4 is far better. Just because it keeps the center nice and closed. And like I said, as long as we control d5, which we do, then that is absolutely fine. We just have to stop him from going d5. I think b5 is an idea to kick the bishop back and then go b4 to attack my knight, force my knight away, and then go d5. So I want to play the move a3. So after b5, I can drop my bishop back to b3 or to a2. And b4 isn't a move because our pawn now controls that square. So I'm going to go a3. And again, it also just helps us to stay very flexible in this position. We also don't have to commit to castling either side yet, actually. We could play like f5, g4, g5 without castling. Okay, knight bd7. Not concerning at all. If he goes to b6 to try and put pressure here. Is that an issue? Drop it back, goes d5. We can we always reserve the right to take the knight though, with an attack on the queen, which would end up winning this pawn. I can explain that later. Um I hope that makes sense to you. This knight from b6 will be controlling the d5 square, but if he ever tries to actually execute d5, then we can always take it. And he can't play a move like taking the bishop because his queen will be under attack. Although if he goes to knight b6, we're probably just going to move the bishop because we don't want him to take with the knight. So, okay. Obviously, we don't want to take on e5 now because then he can take with the knight and fork our queen and bishop. Not good. So f5 is the move I'm going to play. And this is also great because it controls some key squares on the diagonal that our bishop is controlling. And since he traded off his light square bishop for our knight on f3, we have a really strong grip of the light squares evidenced by our control over d5, which is a big problem for him. Yeah, so he goes for this. We're going to drop our bishop back to b3. Could we have gone to a2? Absolutely. But I don't think it matters all that much. I'd rather have the bishop on b3 just so it defends c2 and controls the a4 square. It, it just controls more squares than if it's on a2, right? On a2, it just has this diagonal and b1, whereas on b3, it controls these two squares as well as this diagonal. 
Yeah, so I don't think this works. Now, if we take, then he can take with the knight. And he's good. But if we take here with the bishop first, queen takes, 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 takes. Then we're just going up a pawn. So let's do that. If he takes with the pawn, then same story. Same story. Maybe there is an interesting line though. After knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, he could be intending queen to e3 check. Because our queen is defending that square. And if knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, he could be intending queen to b2. Is I don't know whether that's a big problem or not. I mean, we don't actually have to take the pawn. Like, the line that I want to go for is takes... Takes, takes, bishop takes, give up b2, and then castle kingside. And then moves like bishop c5, come with a check, c2 hangs, why allow that? We could just castle queenside here. And if he plays the move d4, then great, we get the diagonal back. So, castle, probably rook f to d8. And then we can maybe go for g4, g5. And our bishop is doing a great job of defending uh, it, defending the queen side because it controls c2 and blocks the queen's attack on b2. So yeah, this makes a lot of sense to me. Fair play to my opponent. I didn't, I didn't spot queen e3 check. That was the problem with the line. If that didn't exist, then we would have just been able to take, take, and take with the queen, and everything would have been fine. But queen e3 check is the problem. We have to play like king d1. That might that might still be winning. To be honest, that might still be winning, but I didn't want to go for it. It just looked horrible. Okay, d4 is played. Now this opens up our bishop, so I'm happy about that. I want to put the knight there and do this. The issue is we have opposite colored bishops in that scenario. I'm not sure how much I love that because it does give a lot of drawing chances, but see what I want to do is I want to play g4, g5 with tempo on the knight, but that would mean I can't put my knight on either of these squares to allow a trade. I don't want to go to a4 because the knight's caught offside there and it can't go anywhere. And if we go back to e2, the knight doesn't really have a future because I can't come forward like this. And if I come to g3, uh, I'm just coming back to e4, but I can do that already. So I'm going to go knight to d5 for the reasons that I just explained, even though I don't want to trade the knights because I want to play g4, g5. I think this is the pragmatic option. Here I didn't take with the bishop for two reasons. Firstly, the bishop is doing a good job of controlling the queen. Secondly, we now have an attack on e5. So I think that's good. And now I feel like we have a very good rip on the light squares in the position. If he tries a4, we can always go a4 if needed. And we control b5 very well. I want to go g4, g5 again. But I think we should start with h4 to control the g5 square to then prepare it. We do have to check h4, h5. But then we can just go queen to f3. And the beauty of opposite colored bishops is that he can't control the light squares. g6 doesn't work because takes, and whoops, the pawn is pinned to the king. 
So h4 looks like a very tempting move. Let's go. If he tries to go like h6 to defend this square, we're just going to continue barreling in. Uh, this looks pretty solid. Just keeping an eye on b7, stopping this pawn from ever moving, keeping pressure on the pawn. And also I'm ready to jump over to the king side if I ever want to with the queen. I don't see how he actually gets any attack going. Okay, now he's threatening to take the bishop because he has a pin on the pawn. So king to b1 looks very natural. Just so this pawn is no longer pinned to the king, so we can't take the bishop. Okay, a5. Now we could allow a4 and go like bishop c4, but then that allows moves like bishop here to target a3 with the pin on the b pawn. So a4 just looks way better. Now a4 might not be absolutely 100% necessary to defend ourselves, but we're setting up a bit of a light squared blockade on a lot of the squares in the position. I had a comment in a recent video talking about how I was explaining square control. And in that video, it was actually um, a Karo Khan. And it was all about controlling the central light squares. But here, I think it's also an applicable concept because we're controlling, especially because it's an opposite colored bishop, opposite colored bishop position, we're controlling a lot of the light squares. Rook c5 is interesting. I think the point is that it defends e5 and allows his bishop to move. But I don't know where he wants to put the bishop. He might be trying to double up. But we, all, we always have like rook d2 just to safeguard c2. Although even if he do doubles up, he's not threatening anything anyway. So g4 looks plenty good to me. Getting our own attack going. He might be planning to move the queen and then play b5 to try and break apart the pawn structure. Okay, retreats the bishop. This looks like a good idea, trying to play on this pin. Although h6... Yeah, so this was designed to defend e5 so we can move the bishop. But I'm not sure what he wants to do with the bishop. Hmm. I think g5 can't be a bad move. We're going to want to play it at some point anyway. I don't want to commit to either of these yet though. Rook g8 or rook d to g8. Which, which rook do I want to move? Because if we can get a rook on the g-file, then we can fret an f6. Okay, moves the king. So that takes away some of those ideas. Does g6 do anything? No. I'd like to go h5, but that hangs the pawn. So probably rook g1 first to support this pawn. And then we can go h5. Then maybe even h6. That looks nice. Again, if he tries to do anything on the queen side, our rooks can always help out in the defense by lifting to the second rank if need be. My opponent goes f6. Interesting. His king has no legal moves now, which is worth noting. Now, if we go g6, our opponent's going to play h6 and lock down the structure. We don't want that. A move that looks very tempting to me is h5. And if he takes... 
h6. His queen does defend that square now, though. So if he takes... I'm not sure what our idea is. There was ideas of sacking on g5, and if pawn takes, going after h7, but the bishop can just take, so that doesn't work. What if we take? Well, if we take, then probably bishop takes, or queen takes. And again, our attack seems to be gone. He's not actually threatening to do anything, though, because he can't really take us. So we're going to have all sorts of nasty moves, like rook takes h7 with checkmate to follow. So we don't actually have to do anything, but we need to find some way to set something up. Again, I want to make this work, but he's going to take me. We could play a bit of a quiet move, like rook g2. A bit of a waiting move. In fact, rook h2 I kind of prefer. I know it puts the rooks on dark squares, which shouldn't be preferable. But this rook is doing more than this rook. This pawn is more important than this pawn, so... I'm just going to play rook h2. I'm struggling to find an actual breakthrough. and I don't want to spend forever looking for one. So this is the move that I'm going to play. Just, just just, to help with the defense. Just in case. Okay, queen c6. He offers me a queen trade. If we decline the queen trade, b5 is on the horizon. That's not that scary, though. If we take... Well, if we take, he can't take here, because this comes with checkmate. I'm going to take, actually. I'm going to take, because we do now have ideas of doubling up. Ah! There we go. There we go. My opponent played an incredible game. He played so, so accurately. But he slips up at the last second. Of course, if we take the queen, he can just take this pawn back. It's probably a draw. But this is checkmate. In between move. That's game over. That's 1995 ELO. And the Vienna Gambit delivers again. He did not accept the Gambit. And he defended very well, especially getting the game into an opposite coloured bishop position made it very difficult for me to try and generate enough attacking force to break through. But yeah, I think he kind of just... Uh, by the way, king h8 and f6 was an interesting idea. I think I'm on board with it, although f6, I don't know whether that was necessary. I feel like he should have tried a bit harder to play moves like queen a6 and b5 attacking us. But yeah, we just asked him a question. This might just be completely drawn, this position. Again, an engine saying it's completely drawn and it actually being completely drawn, though, are very different things. If he takes back here, I believed I was winning after a move like rook g2 threatening mate on g8. And if you take with the rook, I assumed that g7 would become incredibly weak. Uh, I thought taking with the bishop was the best idea. And here I was planning on going for a move like queen g4, putting pressure on, and going for moves like h5, h6. But even after h5, my opponent can just go h6 and lock the structure. So, yeah, it might have just been a complete draw. But yeah, pose a, pra a practical, tactical problem. And people are not always going to give the correct answers. I say this so often. You just have to ask questions. And people aren't perfect. Anyway, let's get into the game review. And I'll flesh out a few of the ideas of the opening a bit further. And into that middle game. Because that was very interesting. Alright, so game review scores. I had 82.9% accuracy. 
my opponent had 73% accuracy. So it wasn't a, like a perfect game or anything, but as opposed to what my previous videos in the rating climb may suggest where I've had insanely high accuracies, that it's, it's not the norm, right? 83, well 82.9, is still a very good score. We had quite a few mistakes though, so we're going to see what the computer criticizes. So we have the Vienna. My opponent chose knight to f6. You can also go knight to c6, in which case the main idea is bishop c4, knight f6, d3. And again, like what happened in the game, you try and clamp down on the d5 pawn in a lot of cases. My opponent chooses knight f6, and we go f4. Now, my opponent here went for d6 just to support his center, which is fine. Come on, which is fine. d5 is the main move, though, and you go into lines like this. This is all very theoretical. Um, there's so many different moves here, like knight to c6, knight takes c3, f5. All important lines to know. Um... If you go, if, if your opponent goes knight c6, just remember bishop b5. You need to pin this knight and take it if prompted. If f5 is played, you should play d3 to try and get your opponent to take you. And if your opponent takes you, uh, sorry, if your opponent takes you, you can take back with either pawn. I prefer b takes c3. And if you can, like, the ideal setup for white here is like d4, bishop d3, knight e2, castle, knight f4, those sorts of ideas. You're not always going to get your ideal setup, but that is the goal. So you can get positions like, I don't know, this, for example. And the computer believes white is absolutely dominating here, which, yeah, is the case really. So... This is sort of the setup you want. Black, of course, cannot allow you to do that, but that is the main idea of the Vienna. Regardless. Regardless, that's not the right word. <laughs> anyway, d6 is the move my opponent chose. We go knight to f3. Taking here is bad because black gets very, very quick development and castles quickly, can maybe even bring the queen out. And white is lacking behind in development, especially with all the weaknesses towards the king, right? This is not good. So knight f3 is the move. If your opponent takes you, you can play it like an improved king's gambit. d4, you're going to win this pawn back. We did actually have an episode of the rating climb where I believe my opponent here went knight to h5 to forcefully hold on to the pawn and played moves like g5, h6 to try and defend it. This is a way to go about the position, but it is very, very dubious because white just gets such easy development. And I, in that game, I believe I just crushed black down the king side and the center. I believe I forced this pawn through to e6 and he had to sacrifice a piece for it. But... This is also a way that you can handle the position. It's not great though. And of course, if uh, you take an nd4 and black just continues to develop normally, white just gets a very, very easy position. Bishop c4, you don't have to go c4, you can go to d3 if you want. If d5 is played, you probably push e5. At least I would push e5, just because that's the way that I like to play. And again, very, very easy game to play. You get kind of everything you want. Domination over the center, quick development, open f-file to attack down, perfect. Again, these aren't all the best moves, but these are the types of positions that I like to play. Anyway, bishop g4, and I go bishop c4. This is not the best move in the position. Apparently h3 is a bit better, but again, this is the way that I like to play the position because I'm trying to set up tactics on the f7 pawn. For the sake of argument, if your opponent plays a move like bishop e7, f takes e5, f takes e5, then bishop takes f7 check works. And these are kind of like natural moves from your opponent, right? Bishop e7 and taking a pawn, they're pretty standard. But here you have this classic Vienna tactic where the bishop comes out to g4 and the bishop comes out to c4. 
where the bishop is hit by the knight and the queen and the knight moves with tempo on the king because the bishop sacrifices itself on f7 are you going to be able to memorize every single position that this happens in if you want to play the vienna no no but you're supposed to watch out for the themes so the themes are that e5 is kind of destabilized i can take and take and there's no other defender of the square right if a knight was on like c6 or d7 then this wouldn't really work i'll explain in a second why and when you have a bishop out on c4 targeting f7 before black castles and a bishop on g4 pinning the knight again these are a lot of different variables this isn't going to happen every game but it's just an idea to watch out for um if your opponent goes for a move like knight bd7 here then you can't do this because here he just takes back with the knight and you can't play knight g5 check because the bishop is defended by the knight. Yeah, you need the knight to be attacking the bishop as well. This is still a good position for white though. You can just develop normally with like d3. Again, you still have pressure going. You have fantastic control over d5 like we did in the game. If black takes you, again, quick, easy development, open f file. The bishop's a bit stranded because if you take, you just take back with the queen and you're very happy very easy position and like I said I was calculating this knight takes e4 line and I knew that this was the move because of a previous analysis that I did taking back with the knight isn't quite as good here because of d5 knight eg5 is apparently the best move although it's yeah I did check this in a previous video but it's very counterintuitive I was calculating something like this I believe um, or maybe d4 here. Oh, the b7 pawn's hanging in this position. But let's just say c6 instead then. Anyway, I, I, I was calculating these kinds of lines. Knight d7 and knight c6 are apparently the best moves, but you get my point. It's better, though, to take, instead of taking here, to take on f7 first after king takes knight takes d5 isn't playable because you can take on e5 and again you have the same tactic where the bishop sacrifices itself on f7 and prepares the knight to move with a tempo so that you can win the bishop and d5 obviously doesn't fork your pieces anymore and so it's best for your opponent to retreat the king to get out of all these checks apparently and you're smooth sailing you know, this is just a very nice position. The opponent's king is stranded. You're going to castle kingside, open f file. Very strong knights in the center, good central control. You really couldn't ask for much more, right? So while the computer calls bishop c4 an inaccuracy, I quite like it. My opponent took on f3, which is very strange. It's just odd. Like, I didn't even make him do it. He must have just been really scared of ideas like this. But knight c6 is perfectly fine. Because like I explained before, these tactics no longer work because when the knight takes on e5, the knight can just take back. Everything is perfectly defended. And here, you know, I'd probably just going to play d3, castle. Knight d4 is always a move to put pressure on my knight, but I quite like these positions because I like to get some really complicated lines like knight d4 um just say for the sake of argument we have something like this i really like these sorts of positions where i let the file open and then i move my rook over to it and just get a really nice looking king side attack I've let my rook open my bishop open the f pawn moving for my other bishop to get involved again great grip over d5 your opponent doesn't have to cooperate but i'm just saying this is an idea that i really enjoy playing but okay, my opponent takes on f3, we take back, bishop e7. Apparently taking here is good, d3 is also fine. Castle, bishop e3, which isn't the best. The computer wants me to take, and then go bishop e3. But personally, I don't really see the difference. I'm chill. I'm, I'm chilling if he takes me. I'm going to take back with the queen. I'm going to castle, launch an attack. It looks pretty good to me, right? So c6. Again, here we can take on e5 to force d takes e5 so that d5 is never a move because he now has no d pawn. 
and then play a move like a3 which the computer likes to drop the bishop back after a move like b5 or maybe to um to b3 probably like we did in the game but you know we we, we could have taken i decided to go a3 first my opponent goes knight b to d7 and f5 isn't the best okay so better is bishop a2 or castling either side then if my opponent tries to go for this knight b6 line then you take you force the d pawn away from the d file and i think the point is that this knight is absolutely useless now is you control all of its movement and it's just a waste of a piece i think that's the idea which i missed that's fair that's fair. And then we have a really nice kingside attack cooking with this bishop being an absolute monster and black not being able to open up the center. And if you're attacking, you want the center closed. And that is the case here. Also, we have the open f file, which can become useful. So this this was certainly better. We went for f5. And OK, knight v6. Funnily enough, castling queenside is best here because if takes takes, I guess we just absolutely clamp down on the d5 square like this. It's kind of counterintuitive to trade off your strong bishop like this. But I guess it's difficult for black to make any moves because g4, g5 is coming. You can throw this pawn forward, break through with a move like g6 or h6. And again, the center is completely shut. You also have really good pressure on the center with moves like c5 in the future. Uh, trying to play on the pin with the pawn. So again, that's pretty cool. We went bishop b3, which is inaccurate because of d5. And I miscalculated this. Bishop takes b6 is not a good move. The reason I played bishop takes b6 is because I missed that in this position, queen e3 check was playable. And apparently this is still good for white, but <laughs> this is, I don't know, unnecessary to put my king in such danger. Here, better than taking on b6 was apparently bishop to f2. Ah, okay. And then if you take, then I just take. And then I have the open d file. My attack's still coming. And now if you push, it's no longer a fork. I can just drop my knight back. The center's now shut. Castle queen side. And again, throw my pawn forward. So that's an interesting idea. But I missed that. Because like I said, I just missed a move queen e3. If queen e3 wasn't a move here, I assume I'm absolutely chilling. And there are moves like bishop g5 to stop me from castling. Because this queen is stopping me from going king side. But let's just say I get an extra move to castle. Now I'm much, much better. Right, and this is what I had in my head. I'm up a pawn. These pawns are going to start rolling. I've The center is going to stay shut because he's out of center pawns, apart from e5, which isn't doing a whole lot. And this is just a very easy position for me to try and attack in. But like I said, missed, missed queen e3, so I decided to castle. The other potential line was to do this and give up b2 and castle kingside, but I correctly evaluated this wasn't good after queen c2, bishop b7. You just don't get anything here with white. Like you're out of ideas because you can't start throwing your pawns forward because your king's castled over here and it needs to hide on the h1 square because this diagonal is about to be taken over by black. So castling queenside, I think, was what well, is the best move. D4. I was happy to see this. E4 is apparently a better square to put the knight on. Although I think it's kind of interchangeable, to be honest. We went to uh, D5. Takes, takes. Bishop to F6. And we find H4, which is the clinical move to try and get an advantage here. And so rook A D8. Queen goes to e4. Can go to e4 or f3. Doesn't really matter. Rook goes back to c8 again. He's now threatening my bishop. So we played the simple king b1. 
And here I thought Black needed to start throwing pawns. And he did with a5. Apparently we can just ignore this. And if he goes a4, <laughs> the computer just wants to take it and retreat back, I think. And I guess this pawn is never a threat because you can just advance to a4 and you control all the light squares. So yeah, if I was a bit more cold-blooded, I would have just gone straight for g4 because a4, a4 is not necessary. Queen b4 is the best move here. I think I was expecting queen a6 with the same idea. After g4, I assume b5. And black's creating some threats. Like, the computer thinks that I need to trade queens here. Like, that's the only move. And if I can trade, it's probably a draw, but, you know, it's it's fine. But my opponent goes rook c5. g4 is the only move to maintain an advantage. And yeah, I guess black is just playing unnecessary moves. Bishop e7. He doesn't need to reroute the bishop. Like, the bishop's holding everything down perfectly well. g5. King h8, which is a good move, because if he goes something like queen b5 before now, to try and play this, I mean, we have a ton of options. f6 is apparently the best, and if takes g6, whoa. And you can't take, because queen takes g6, and whoops, that's a pin. And that's mate. That's very cool. f6 is a nice move. But, yeah, your king side is getting destroyed here. So king h8 was a good move, stepping off of this pin so that these sorts of ideas don't work. So here we mess up. f6 is the only move. After g takes, g takes, bishop takes, rook d to f1, rook c6, H to G1. It's kind of odd. I'm not really sure what the idea is. Queen G4. Oh, maybe it's to go. Ah, right. This is the idea. But also, you have stuff like, say, that tactic in particular didn't work. Moves like Bishop takes F7. And if Rook takes, then it's mate. And if he doesn't react, then it's still mate. So okay, I missed I missed f6. It makes a lot of sense. Just open the lines up. I went rook d to g1, which yeah, was unnecessary. And it allows f6, which is the best move for him. I can't go g6 here because h6, and I'm never breaking through ever because all the pawns are locked. And I understand this, so I went rook h2, which is the best move, so I'm glad I found that one at least. My point is, you can't take me, because then the h-file opens, and if you play a move like this, then you're getting mated. Right, the king can't go anywhere, and my bishop controlling g8 was a big problem for him. That's one of the powers of opposite bishops, is that it normally favours the attacking side if a blockade can't be set up on the colour complex that the defending side is stronger in, which is obviously the dark squares in this scenario. Because again, if he can set up a blockade like this, I have no attack. So, f6, rook h2, queen c6, he offers me a queen trade. Taking is fine. I did consider taking, but... Again, if I go here, then the game is basically over, as in a draw. Apparently, I have some ideas here, but although the computer gives me a tiny advantage, I guess because I have more space, like, it's never going to come to anything. If he takes me, then again, I'm threatening moves like Rook here. So say he plays a nothing move. Oh, G6 as well. And if H6... Ah, that's cool. <laughs> We're getting an under-promotion. But, so yeah, queen c6. I thought g takes f6 was a nice try. Apparently it's completely drawn if he just takes back with the bishop. Like I said, if you take with the pawn, then queen g4 and you're getting mated. 
if you take with the bishop, you're good. Like, I don't really have any attack. Apparently, rook g3 is the best move, which is just... What? What? Explain? <laughs> um, I can maybe try and keep the queens on the board, but b5 and I'm getting destroyed here. Black's attack is a lot better. So again, I probably have to trade. Apparently, I have a tiny advantage. I don't really know how I'd do anything with it, because if h5, then h6. Um, but I, I, I could try and grind this out, I suppose. Realistically, it's a draw. Maybe you can go for an exchange sacrifice to win a pawn at some point. Like, say you have... Um, let me try and manufacture a position. Like this... Um, well, no, not like that. Like this, maybe. You can try and sack an exchange for a pawn, but even here it doesn't really work. So it's probably just a draw. But yeah, my opponent just blunders. And to be fair, he would have had to have found bishop f6. He could have taken with four pieces here. And only one of them is not completely losing. Bishop f6 is arguably the most natural choice and probably the choice he would have made. But again, we pose a problem. If we take here and bishop takes, computer thinks we have a slight... Well, almost a winning advantage, which is interesting. I guess because we have a nice outpost on d5. And his king's kind of weak. But again, realistically it's a draw. But yeah. He just makes a mistake. We capitalize on the on the mistake. I learned quite a few interesting things about the Vienna that game though, for sure. Firstly, about d5. It's not the end of the world if he gets to play d5. Also, allowing this bishop to be taken isn't always bad. If I can set up this c4, e4, Maroxy bind sort of setup. This is something you see in the Sicilian kind of op often. And this is actually um, a similar structure you see towards the start of Vienna games sometimes. You go like e4, e5, knight c3. Can I remember the line? Uh, let me think. Knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, d3. Bishop e7. Yeah, moves. Uh, there's one lines like this where you get this kind of structure. This sometimes happens in the Vienna, and then you might have um, this this kind of thing where again White just exerts a ton of pressure over the d5 square and yeah I I should consider that a bit more seriously because yeah I mean our opponent defended well he got himself to, into a bit of trouble in the opening but this whole d5 idea was nice from him uh, with the move queen to e3 check which I missed unfortunately but yeah we, 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 we definitely had some attacking chances I shouldn't have panicked as much when I saw the move a5. I should have just kept attacking. a4, I can be pragmatic, especially with opposite coloured bishops. I should just be taking that and know that I'm okay. But, okay, a4 is unnecessary. Time is of the essence here. I sh like, like I said, a5, g4. Here, I just go up a clean pawn. If black retreats the bishop, then I'm just going to win this. Although not immediately because of bishop a3. But bishop comes to b3 to block this. So the pawn is defending there and isn't pinned to the king. I'm up a pawn. This attack is coming in very nicely. Um, e5 is also hanging. Yeah. Good lessons to learn. But regardless, we win the game. And yeah, we are 5 elo points off of 2000. Which officially would be the end of the series will we continue the series i'm considering going to 2.2k we'll see i could restart it from like 1500 ish 
let me know what you think in the comments of that whether you would prefer me starting it again from i don't know 1200 1500 or trying to continue to 2.2 thousand the only issue with trying to continue i'm not sure i'd be able to give as in-depth explanations during the games because i'd need to think more right um and explaining obviously means that i can't think as well because it goes through my head quickly and then it takes a bit longer for me to explain it that's the point of this series because i'm trying to make it so that you guys can see how i'm thinking so you know if you guys are all right with the explanation suffering a bit just having to do more in the post game analysis maybe but i also feel like that kind of defeats the point of the series anyway let me know what you think about that Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.